the mighty Mississippi, eh? Let's see, what is that? There's a car there, there's 100% a car. who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. Civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. Today, we're kind of taking a break here at the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, Missouri, also known as a Silver Rainbow, at the Mississippi River. Now, for those of you who do not know who Down Under Dan is, he's actually kind of started like his own little mini AWP movement down under. He's already worked on pulling, how many cars have you now pulled in uh, Australia? We've pulled out probably five cars so far. Um, we've identified in one particular river, there's like 50 cars. And so we're just slowly working. We've had a lot of floods. You guys are in drought. We're in floods at the moment. So it's making very difficult to actually get a window of opportunity to remove some more cars. So in between actually looking for missing people, we've got three active cases that I'm working on at the moment um, and trying to clean up the environment as well. You know, it's just a balancing act with the weather at the moment. It's just crazy down in Australia. So many floods on the east coast. It's just, we're they're getting floods now as we speak. So we just got to try and balance it, make sure we're safe when we dive. Um, there's a lot of debris in the water stronger currents than normal and yeah we just have to be patient but we guarantee we'll get more cars out in the near future. It's an excellent spot as you said we've got a little bit of river traffic with barges and so forth but we've got a good long stretch we really concentrate on identifying vehicles hopefully you find a couple of different at different stages of decay just to help me understand a little bit better how they all sit and how they look underneath the sonar uh, looking for a new one looking for a one that's maybe 10 years old and then maybe we'll go for one that's maybe 20 years old and try and compare them see their state of decay so we can actually pinpoint it'd be great to be actually go find a vehicle try and work out what it is on top and then dive it and to see how far close we are. Yep, and with that, we wanna be you know, very detailed, not just with Dan today, but we want to really focus more on video for you today as well. So that way we're bringing you into it for those that want you know, more of this like, how are you able to tell it's 30 years old versus 10 years old versus a fresh vehicle just by looking at the sonar. So that's gonna be part of the training today. Sure. And Dan comes into this with a law enforcement background as well. So with this, you've been with us for the last two weeks, especially on the uh, Donnie, um, Messier case yeah. was really good that you helped play, you know, lead on that one as far as using your investigative, you know, natures and talents of, you know, thinking of where should we be looking next. And so if you've not seen that recovery where we were able to solve that missing persons case, definitely check out the Donnie Messier case. But also in the link down below, we're going to have Down Under Dan Diving is his link on his YouTube channel. So be sure to jump over there, check him out and subscribe to him. It's free to do so. And I look forward to getting on the water with you today and see what we can find in front of, I mean, I can't think of a better place to be training you today. And look at that, what, with the moon in the, right in the center, that's an absolutely gorgeous spot. Yep, and while today is currently a training day, we're gonna have a lot of fun, a lot of laughter. It might turn serious later on. We just never know what it is that we're going to find. We might actually solve a missing person's case today. Yeah. Anyway, let's get on the water. Right, let's right. go do it. Let's go. Thanks for being here.
So the big thing in working with you, Dan, is like what equipment do we use and why? Now you're currently using Lorance for your sight scan? Or no, you no, no, I'm using the Hummingbird Helix sight. Okay, so your so your Helix is not a touch screen. So with a touch oh, screen, yeah. let me just get, kind of give you a rundown on this a little bit. When you touch the upper area versus the lower, see how the yellow bar yep. goes there and there? That's what can give you control over each one. So if you need to scroll back, you can do so and then just hit X to get your screen moving again is sure. what you're gonna do. We like to shoot 75 feet left and right. Yep. Is that where you're shooting when you run yours? Uh, 20 meters. <laughs> okay, so roughly 60 to 65 feet is where you're running. Yeah. So we find that that gives us a good um, idea so that way when a vehicle pops up, it's gonna pop up roughly the length of what these grids are from 18, 36, 54, 75. Yep. Anything that's black, once we get on the water, you know that anything that's black is water column versus anything that's you know yellow is going to be uh, your river bottom, and that's where your object should going to show up at. Yep. Uh, over here, we're using the Garmin uh, life scope on this one. Usually we shoot down, but today I'm gonna run it a little bit different for you so that we can see more of your target that you're coming up on rather than just being right over it. Um, if by any chance you like end up hitting something and it just gets jammed up, uh, you know, just hit the home button, go back to live scope, and it will reset it here for you. So I've got the um, Hummingbird live scan, um, which is all in one. So I use the one monitor. Oh, you have live. I have well. live. Okay. So, uh, so you, not the Garmin, but so, I have the Hummingbird. So you're familiar with how the live works too then? I am. Okay. So we got the down, which is picture in time, side, picture in time, and we'll show more of it when we're on the water so that way our viewers can actually see how it's working as well. So for your first scan, what you want to end up doing, Dan, is pick about 30 to 35 feet offshore, yep. and then let's just run it so that way your side scan is going to start showing up. It's going to pick up a lot of the bank. But what will happen sometimes if you're too far out, if a vehicle is laying just right, the shadow against the bank is not going to allow you to see the vehicle in question. Yep. And so, yeah, it'd take us probably yeah, over another 10, 15 feet closer to shore right now. Now, the optimum speed that you go for scanning? Uh, so your optimum speed, we like to be two and a half to three and a half miles per hour. And you found over 50 vehicles uh, have, this past year down in uh, Australia. Yeah, absolutely. There's a number of rivers uh, that I can get access to. There's a couple that I can't. Um, so we're focusing on the moment on what we can get access to. So you can see plenty of logs. A lot of fish swimming around down there too. Yes, the on the live. On the live, yeah. Now, when you first started, yep. you know, from my own personal experience, everything looked like a car when you first started. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, what, where, where was like your turning point for confidence when you're like, no, 100, this is a car versus no, this is a pile of rocks and logs. Well, I'm always looking at shadow, seeing what kind of shadow it casts. Obviously, the shape of the object and comparing it to a, a vehicle and after diving a number of spots that you, you'd swear it was a car, you dive down on it and you realise no it, it isn't. I think the, the trick is hitting it from multiple angles and that actually really helps establish okay well you know from this direction it looks like a car, this direction it looks like a pile of rocks. So it's just becoming familiar enough and putting the time on the water to determine the difference between those objects. And when you're running your live scope, do you yep. like to run your live scope? Right now I've got it on forward versus, you know, normally I run it on down. Where do you like to run your live scope? I've only used it on down. Um, I'm, it's still fairly new to me, so I'm still getting used to using it. I prefer the side and down first, finding an object, then sitting over the top of it with a live scan and just confirming it. Now the Mississippi, there's not many times where you can actually come out and get in the river for diving. Today the river is nice and low, perfect uh, diving conditions if you're going to be in a river, especially the Mississippi. Visibility, not so much. Not so much. Beautiful flat off to our right hand side, plenty of debris on our left. A lot of logs we just went over now. There is that large shadow on the right hand side, just 
where we saw Carson. And so as uh, Dan is scanning here, anything, so if you look at the depth right here, 11 feet, and you compare it to the grid lines here, anything that's black is going to be very close to this 10, 11 foot as it goes up and down. From the boat, the boat is traveling this direction, so 18, 36, 54, and then you have the shore. So the, all the dark here is the shore, so there's 54 feet over there. And then you have the water column here, and then he's casting 75 feet to his right as well. And that, you might have something right there. See how it's laying a different direction? Yes. So if you focus in on that, you might have a vehicle right there. And it actually looks like two logs, so probably not. But we'll definitely want to double check that. I want to go out another six foot and go back the other way. Yep. But I might have passed you this camera. Yeah, and it was 36 feet over. So yeah, I would go like 20 feet over 20 and then feet over. go see if you can hit that again. Get right over the top of it with both your down and your life scope. And it will really tell you if we have a vehicle there or if it's just logs and debris. Now, you have got your new bit of equipment, the magnetometer. I think this will revolutionize what you're doing in regards to, do you foresee you would just be scanning with the magnetometer first? Well, except then we start picking up big barges like this. Yeah. So big barges like that, so we can't be scanning next to that where we would expect it to work. Over here a little bit more? Yeah, when we're further away from it, or if we didn't have any barges in the river, we're going to be using it in Atchison uh, on a case for Billy Bob and Mary Black, where we believe uh, their vehicle, that is a Honda, may have been. Our, si our side scan wasn't picking up on it. However, a fisherman had reeled in a mirror that matched their Honda car. So we'll definitely use the magnetometer down there where there's no barges and no other debris in the river. Right, uh, so we're going over uh, an object now. It definitely looks like a log. It does look like a log. All right, we're gonna grab the uh, other boat. We'll run two boats at a more distance down here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go in and out a few times just to make sure there's nothing directly out from underneath the arch. We're at 12.9 feet at the moment. Lovely clear bottom. All the debris that we saw earlier is, look, appears to be logs and that's certainly consistent with what's coming off the bank. There's a lot of driftwood sitting up on the bank especially with you being in drought a little bit at the moment. Let's see, what is that? So we're only at 13 feet at the moment. Oh, down to 14 feet. A lot of debris straight out from the arch or the gate. Now it's a beautiful day in the USA. Sun is shining, birds are singing. It's a cracker of a day. I'm on the water with one of the greatest search teams I've ever seen. Lovely bunch of blokes. Uh, it looks like Jared's getting ready. We'll go have a chat to him and see what his game plan is. So Jared, do you want to go together upstream? Yeah, why don't you go first and I'll follow behind you. Pick up what I miss. Yeah. Sitting at seven feet at the moment, just coming up to the barge. So it'll be interesting to see what that shows. Plenty of fish underneath that barge. Oh my goodness. Fisherman's paradise. It's a very serious job this, looking for lost loved ones, but we also get the benefit of spending time on the water, which is very fulfilling, relaxing even. 
I find I'm, I'm most relaxed when I'm scuba diving, but this is a good second spot. Sitting on top of the water, just scanning along, looking at the topography of the water underneath. Ooh, what's that? Is it that right there? Yeah, it's just those logs. Just how I'm running a little from the angle I hit it earlier. The shit image it's kind of portraying is like two tires sticking up. There's a car there, there's a hundred percent a car. Yep. Car there, Jared. To me it looks like a very decayed car. How many have you found? Is this your first one? Yeah. So you missed one. No? Sorry. Where was the other one? Down where you were. I saw you going in. Yeah, swinging around. I'll take you back over that one. But uh, yeah, this one that you have right here. Yeah, it's tough to say. I would say 10 to 20 years. Yep. That's probably what that one looks like. I think I would like to change that to, to down. Yeah. So we'll change it to options, solar setup, uh, installation, orientation, down. Beautiful. Well, that's definitely one car here. Plus the motorbike sticking out of the, um, the water there. But yeah, let's head up to the, uh, let's cover all this in. All the way to the okay. So I see the one on the right hand side there. There's one on its roof over there. You can see the four wheels sticking up. There's one directly below us there, on its roof. That's that one there. Might just go out a little bit further and see so if I can get exactly over the top of it with a live scan. Saw the one there, saw one out there, saw that one. Right, see if you can find two under the bridge. One's almost directly underneath this, uh, this first bridge support. Yep. About this far out. Okay. Ah, so we've gone over it. So it's over there. So it's definitely a car on its roof, four wheels sticking up in the air. There's actually two there. Two cars there. We're over the top of something I think, there. I think yeah. that's it right there. Yeah. And here there's... And then right, there's, right here it looks like it's like a little bit sideways or something. And because we're looking for man-made structures, oh, yes. it, it throws you off all the time. Certainly when you've got a nice flat bit of riverbed and the car sticks out like a sore toe, it's not so bad. But does make it difficult and as I said the the floods that come down here bury the vehicles under logs very difficult to see so it looks like there was once road access here so we just have a bit of a look around here just to make sure there's nothing hiding looks like it's had a fair bit of flood damage though with the jersey curbs sitting in the, the rubble you can actually see an old concrete leadway out there, so they must have used this as an old pull-in spot. I thought there was two cars here. There was one upside down and one on its feet. Up there? Here. I have a car parked right there. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Ah, 
Oh yeah, you can see that one just there. So you've got this one here, Jared, that's on its roof. Hey, uh, you have two underneath the bridge here. Yeah. They both look really old under the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, right underneath us. Well, there's two. It's one either side. Almost in line with each other, but they are very old. One's on its roof, one is on its wheels. It's the same spot. There's two here, either side. Yeah, you can see the wheels sticking up. Pretty much right over the top of it. Oh yeah, and there's the other one. Yeah, the one that's there, it's on its roof with its wheels up. That one looks like a good one. There's one there, I think, on live scan, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Should run into it. There's one there. This is where electric motors are good. Oh, yes. I guess we'll just go on the shore here, trying not to get stabbed by a needle. Just be real careful down here. There's a lot of garbage in the water. Uh, a lot of fishing line, a lot of cables and stuff like that. So just be very cautious of your surroundings when you're down there. Yep. So yep. my diet plan at the moment is I'm going to float out to the marker, follow the marker down, see if I can identify the vehicle, plate, badge, anything that can identify it. Once I've identified and checked it, I'll probably anything I can bring up, I'll bring up, hand it to you guys. Then I'll go back down for a second dive, do a perimeter. Great. Okay. Great. Golf Juliet, Missouri plate, four door sedan, half upside down, half on its side. City of St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, non emergency Hopkins. <clears throat> if you can give me that plate number that you said that you were able to see. Yep, yeah, it's uh, 281 Echo Golf Juliet. Correct. All right. All right. Um, I have all the information that I need. I'm going to go ahead and pass this along, have PD um, respond. Um, give us a call back if you guys find anything else, um, like a body or something like that. And, um, yeah. Okay. Yep, will do. No problem. Thank you. Take yep. care. You too. Bye-bye. I only had uh, one buoy left with me. So I marked a vehicle, since we've given Dan one on its side, one that's upside down, we're gonna give Dan one that's also upright on its wheels. 
So I, while I found four down there, only one of them was upright on its wheels. So he does not like the visibility in this. We've been spoiling them all week with visibility of like three to six feet, and now it's down to one inch, which is perfect for him because down in, uh, you know, down in Australia, he actually only has one inch of visibility for some of those rivers that he's in as well. So it's perfect for him. He's an incredible diver. He's been diving for, I think, 10 years now, um, as well as with his law enforcement experience, with his detective skills. But he's really been a uh, valuable asset having him up here in the States for the last couple of weeks training with us. So Dan is definitely somebody you want on your team. I wish he lived closer. I put him on the team full time for sure. Anyway, he just went down on this one. So we're going to go circle over there, see what he can pull off of it. And then we'll jump them down to the other way, the uh, other one down the river, right. and see what we can pull off of that. F-150. An F-150, nice. We don't need that. F-150 though. No plates. Again, on its side. Been in there. Have to be. 10 years. Yeah. It's been in there a long time. At least 10 years. You might be able to work it out by the emblem. That's a souvenir for you. Uh, That's a real American Ford souvenir. My wife would be so pleased. Yeah, I know. Let's see. So this other one I'm gonna put you on, my guess is five to 10 years. Okay. Upright. Yep. And then the other two, actually the other three, you can almost walk right out to You'll walk right out to them and run right into them. Yeah. So we don't even need buoys on them. Excellent. But yeah, we'll put eyes on them. And what kind of shape does the car look like? It looks pretty good. I mean, my question is like, is it actually gonna have windows in it or from the debris coming down the river over the past you know, couple of years, has it smashed the windows? Well, that F-150, it had the front windscreen in and the passenger window in, so. Yeah, so there's a good chance. Good chance the glass is still in it. Yeah, and, and tempered glass, I mean, window glass is actually pretty durable. It takes a lot of force to actually break out a window. I don't know if you saw the um, uh, the other day, I actually pulled a whole windscreen out. The vehicle had rusted away completely, but I pulled the windscreen out. Oh yeah, I saw that one, yeah. At first we thought that was a boat, right? That one? Or a tow truck or boat or something, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, was, that was the tow truck. So Peter was asking me just a moment ago, and we can uh, you know, give the viewers a little bit of information on you. So how long have you been diving? How long have you been uh, in law enforcement? What's uh, Dan's history? So I've been a police officer in New South Wales for 12 years now. I have been diving for the same amount of time. When I joined the police, you do have a few days off. So I, I kind of, because of the change of career, I went, well, on my days off, I want to go diving. Always, always snorkeled, and I just went, you know what, I really want to learn how to dive, so one of my sergeants actually uh, has his own dive boat and compressors and has trained me, and then I went and did my proper certification, and as I say, the rest is history. I've been diving, lived about an hour and, away, hour and a half away from the coast, so I was so desperate to go diving, I decided, you know what, there's a, a little um, river down there, I'll go and dive that. Always fascinated by shipwrecks and all that kind of stuff. So this was like a, a natural evolution into diving on old cars. As you know, it started off with just being passionate about cleaning our environment. 
picking up cans and just rubbish out of the water and finding phones and GoPros and drones, all that kind of stuff. Then Jared came along and Jared inspired me to use my skills to actually help others, not just have fun. And as a result, I started looking for Amy was our first missing person we started looking for. My wife and I drove up to Queensland and searched for Amy. We've got our three active cases. Uh, had a bloke out at Dubbo we looked for. So we, we rely a lot on the public to reach out to us. Jason, uh, Nick's dad, reached out to me and said, hey, I saw you talking to um, AWP. Um, can you help me? No, I was in Queensland at the time. I literally organised the boat while I was sitting at the beachfront and went down there a few weeks later and we've been searching for a year now for Nick. We're going back down in January. We've got one particular target that is looking quite promising. Uh, but you never count your chickens until they're hatched. So a lot of work ahead of us. Now with your water down there, you know, what kind of depths are you working with as well as visibility? I know that you have, you know, you've been ocean diving, so you have 20 to 40 to 100 feet visibility versus, you know, this, earlier this week when we were in Pittsburgh, you had, you know, three, four feet of visibility. Now today you have one inch of visibility. So what kind of range are you getting down there in Australia? So our range of visibility is, you know, from one inch to an arm's length to two meters. Uh, and so it just really depends, so that five foot. It just depends on the particular waterway. Our waters are exactly the same as the same. Very dirty, very hard to see. When we were down in Tassie, we found a lot of uh, tea tree stained water as well. So it's, the water is crystal clear, but it's stained with this brown tinge. So that's quite an interesting dive to do as well. Depths are very similar. I wouldn't call this deep diving. This is, you know, we're only talking 12 feet, I think it was where the F-150 was. So it's not deep diving. You still need to be careful uh, with your uh, getting caught up on entanglements. That F-150 had fishing line all over it. Yeah, we, everyone loves a good story. You can't let the facts get in the way all the time. And that makes it hard when we go investigating these kind of things. Because you're going off rumors, you're going off this and that. We saw it with um, Donny. You know, there was all these rumours saying that, you know, this had happened, that had happened. And it was literally a stone throws from his parents' house in the, in the river, in the one hole that we found. So, just uh, some good lessons have learnt, been learnt since I've been here. Not to be too carried away with rumours. Yeah, because we had the Donnie case where, I mean, taking your law enforcement background and you reading the police report, that morning you were like 100% you know, 100%, yeah. this is foul play, this yeah. is what happened to him, here's where he's at, and a complete 180. Yeah, none, of, none of that was true. And it just goes to show, reading a report and actually doing your own research and, and physically searching, it's, it's two totally different things. And police have got to take into account every lead that comes, so they get distracted very easily going off to the left and they've spent many, many hours and many years searching for Donnie and chasing their tails. And unfortunately, some of the crooks probably take a bit of pleasure in that. So would you say that while we've learned, you know, quite a bit from you, since you've been here, are you, would you say that the way that we investigate is going to make you a better investigator yourself? Yes, um, it's very easy to get your, your blinkers on. And so I, I've learned that, yeah, you can't put your blinkers on and until you've checked that water yourself, you cannot assume anything. Yeah. Just because someone said, oh yeah, I checked that, like, it doesn't matter. All right, we're coming up on the uh, buoy right over here. This is going to be the the uh, car that's going to be upright. Yep. And then walking distance from this log right here, I have a vehicle here and I have a vehicle right over here as well. Can you take me into the shoreline? Yep, I'll, I'll take you. I'll roll out without rolling you out. Perfect. Yeah, we'll take you right here and then Here's the uh, buoy right here that you'll be coming out to. Oh, nice and close. Yep. Right yeah, not bad beach. at all. So what I have on sonar on this one, I've got this one that's upright, and then right where 
my red boat is at, you can walk out to it. There's gonna be another one right there within three and a half, four feet underwater, only about 10 feet out. And then just beyond that, another eight feet or so is another one, same distance out. Uh, both of those are gonna be upside down. This is the only one that was upright in the river. Say, Hyande. All windows are up. And I try to get the badge off the back and just fell apart. No plates. Okay. Front windscreen's out. Rear window is out. But all windows are up. This is going to have my hands full. I just want to get up. I thought it was a Toyota at first, but. I couldn't quite work out what that was underwater. Since we are not pulling these, and the front and rear window are already out, do you want a window breaker? Do you want to bust out a side window? Come to mention it, I've already got my AWP window breaker. All right. It's something that every car in, in America should have. I agree with you. So with all windows being up, it's definitely alarming for us. With the back window and the front window being out, with it facing up and downstream, it can make sense that if the back window gets blown out, front window gets pushed out from logs or other debris coming by. Now normally we would not put ourselves in a position to break windows to potentially lose additional uh, evidence. However, because the flow is already going through, most of what's in there is already going to have been flushed out. And because there's no plate on it for us to identify and we're not pulling the vehicle today, we're going to take this extra step today based upon these conditions and we're gonna go ahead and bust out the side window and Dan's gonna go ahead and do a final check inside to see if he can clear this vehicle. If by chance, there are remains now at that point in time, then law enforcement will be brought in and this will turn into a crime scene. Now, because the current is not strong today, that's why we're also not concerned about breaking windows out for us to, if we were in a stronger current, we bust a window out and there were happen to be remains in there, then we could have the potential of losing the remains. But this is so close to shore, we're only 15, 20 feet offshore in a nice calm current. really well. The, uh, the seat belts are all in a not connected position. It's filled with silt, really dense compacted silt. I dug down as much as I can. It was like a suitcase on the back seat. When I tried to pull it out the handle just came off. There was no, without pulling it out and digging it out, I didn't see anything in there. Ah, see, he found it. What is it? 773 Bravo Lima Alpha. Yeah, what kind of car is it? Right. I just got the plate off. I'll go back down and have another look. All right. It, start, it drops off quick, I don't want to go too far. All right. 773 Bravo Lima Alpha. Dan's gonna see if he can identify what type of car this is. Is that the second vehicle or same one? 773 BLA. Huh? Yeah, same. Same one? 624 Kilo Kilo November. Uh, look, I, I've got no visibility. Right. At all. Yeah, see off uh, on the trunk, see if you can get an emblem off the trunk. Well, that's off the back. Yeah, see, yeah, so that's see. That's the emblem off the back. But see if we're like on one of the sides. On the side of the trunk? Yeah. Where the emblem might be? That's where that cord is. Where it was on the side or in the back? In the back. Back center or back side? Back side. 
Okay. Yeah, see if you can check the other side. See if there's a... a car? Is it a car? Six two four KKN. It's buried. It's buried. The windows are buried. It's only got about that much to get out of the, the dirt. There's trees all around it. Okay. I'll keep on looking. Red. All right. Where the back of the bumper is, it's like riding, but it's built it into the molding. It's not like a badge you can just pull off. But 100% a red one. Okay. Sounds good. Not really cold. Are you done diving? Really cold. Okay. Yeah. Let's get you out if you're cold. Alright Jared, we've managed to find lots of cars today, we've um, spent a good time training, diving, doing all those things, we've identified, is it three plates we got off? Three plates. Three plates. And so PD is supposed to be coming down but I've not seen him yet, so we have looked at Google to yep. see if they're associated with any missing persons cases, we've not been able to identify anything there, so my guess is they've just been dumped. And the thing here in the U.S. is we find that every five to seven years, they they wipe the systems. Like, they don't that's keep reports. crazy. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if Australia is the same way. No, or. no. Once it's on the system, that stays on there. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So, there's three things that I want to do today with you. Yep. One is we want to make sure that people know that you have a YouTube channel as well. Yep. Down Under Dan Diving. That's correct. The link is in the description down below, so be sure to subscribe to that. Second... We need to get you warmed up. I know you got like a little leak going on somewhere. Yeah, I'm really cold. So let's get you, out, get you warmed up. And number three, let's introduce Dan to a couple of the activities here in America. With, I think we should head up, I think it's like 631 or 691 feet. Little like windows we can look out at the top. But uh, hey, really appreciate you coming to America. And if you have not done so already, please subscribe to us as well. Again, it's free. The link is in the description down below. We'll see you on the next episode where, fingers crossed, we're going to be able to help a family bring home their lost loved one. Thanks a lot.